I don't think anyone wants us to debate River Heights. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the AfterSpark Podcast, an episode-by-episode episode recap of the Generation 1 Transformers cartoon. I'm Els. And I'm Spex. And today we're going to be talking about episode number 8, SOS Dinobots. Let's talk about giant robots today, shall we? Yeah. So today, today we get Grimlock! <laughs> Look at my perfect dino child! <laughs> oh, you really like him. I really love Grimlock and I haven't got to talk about Grimlock. And now I get to talk about Grimlock. Uh, and at the arc, the Autobots are talking about a series of mysterious earthquakes. Which yeah. through a volcano, I don't really know what they expect. They're not to be seismic activity, but okay. Considering that it woke them up, or at least it woke the Decepticons up prior to Starscream's Stupidity. Yeah. <laughs> oh, poor decision making. Ironhide apparently has sonar sensors. He decides to use them. I don't know what the hell a sonar sensor hey, excuse is. Excuse me, what now? Uh, <laughs> sonar. Sonar? I don't know. I, I, know. I swear I looked it up and it was sonar. It was not sonar. It was sonar. And I was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> what the hell? But yeah, okay. Apparently, Ironhide's windshield also doubles as a monitor. He is starting to feel like the Swiss Army knife of the Autobot army. <laughs> I mean, geez, he kind of is. I just, he keeps pulling shit out, and I'm like, where are you getting this shit from, man? Well, I feel like all of them do that to some extent, but definitely Iron Yeah, I feel like he's done it the most in the last, like, four episodes, though. Yeah. He's got a lot of space in his trunk. <laughs> God That's... damn it. God damn it. <laughs> I did not say he's got a lot of junk in his trunk this time, except he does. God, I said it. <laughs> I blame you. Anyway, he scans the rock wall and his sensors recognize something's behind the wall. And so they set Sideswipe and Braun to break through because Sideswipe's got like pile drivers and Braun's basically just a wrecking ball. <laughs> a wrecking ball on legs. So inside they find some weirdly well-preserved dino bones and a volcano, an active volcano. Archaeologists would be ready to fucking murder these robots. Particularly Wheeljack, considering he actually picks up some of the bones. Well, well, considering how he handles them. Dude, he's Wheeljack. He does what he wants. He does. He really does. And Spike explains fossils to the robots. <laughs> oh my god. But then, uh, we, we're back at another hydropower plant slash dam. And Soundwave exhibits... A purple listening tentacle. I had to cut in. He, he's like in. He, he's in like his boombox mode. Yeah. Exhibiting a purple listening tentacle. It's just. It's up there. God, it's sort of like a uh, snake charmer snake. A little bit. But I had. Like, is this where Transformers Prime got all his tentacles from? Maybe. I mean, there's a weird <laughs> number of tentacles in this stupid cartoon. Uh, and, yeah. I love it, but it's really dumb. It's really, really weird. And Soundwave and Reflector are listening to the tourists gather information. As 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 we've mentioned earlier, Soundwave's in boombox form. Reflector, for whatever reason, is just hanging out as a Polaroid camera. <laughs> and and this seems bad, as in like, wouldn't this be completely useless? Have you met tourists? Do you really think you would get relevant information from them? <laughs> Well, I mean, the thing is, they're not even, like, up where the tourists are. They're down on a ledge underneath, like, like this, Yeah, underneath where they're standing. And I, I'm gonna go with they can only hear them because of the, the listening tentacle. Considering that, yeah, there's, what, a waterfall or something? I, well, yeah, because it's, it's a dam, so I think it's where some of the water is coming through. It's just like, God. <laughs> yeah. And then they noom off and absolutely no one notices. <laughs> just gonna go with humans do not notice shit in this world my god maybe it's like that thing where if you're focusing on something you would completely ignore a dude in a girl a costume if it walked right by you i mean you. maybe they were so fascinated by the dam that they didn't notice i want to say they flew off in their alt modes but i can't actually remember this so they didn't notice a polaroid camera and a boombox flying by yeah i don't remember either but yeah it's However it happens, it's still goofy as hell. <laughs> so, uh, back with Spike, uh, he takes the bots to a museum to see more dino bones. Or at least Hound. He took... <laughs> yeah, he takes... He definitely takes Hound. Maybe some of the others are scoping out some of the other stuff, but there's definitely Hound in there. How the hell does he fit? How does he I mean, fit museums are huge in this world, apparently. <laughs> or at least 
least they've got super big doors. Or Apparently. Or big enough a Jeep can drive through. Or maybe they went through, like, the cargo entrance or something. That still begs the question of how the hallways would be big enough for a freaking robot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, what sort of museum this is, because I'm pretty sure the one back at my hometown did not have dinosaur bones. No clue. <laughs> maybe, maybe, or maybe, maybe they're in the Portland Museum. I have no idea. Oh, look, some inaccurate bones. Like, God, that foreleg looks like a back leg. Uh. Okay, welcome to my TED Talk. Today I'm going to complain about how no one bloody understands how the front legs work on a quadruped. It drives me nuts. <sighs> yeah. And meanwhile, Hound takes holograms of the dinosaur fossils to show to the rest of the Autobots, which... They do when they get back to the Ark. So while Hound is displaying these holograms for the other Autobots, Spike explains that dinosaurs were very powerful, but very, very dumb. So dumb. So, Wheeljack has the brilliant idea of creating some dinosaurs for the Autobots. Well, Ratchet looks on like, oh god, honey, no. But he totally resigns himself to joining in on this little project, too. Ratchet! Let's make babies! <laughs> He's actually pretty gung-ho about it. It's, it's less resigned and more, yeah, this seems like a great idea. <laughs> they're, they're totally, he's just as into it as Wheeljack is. And Prime says, sure, why the fuck not? <laughs> Are you ready for a montage? <laughs> and we see a montage of the Autobots building the Dinobots. <laughs> the joke goes, the fun part is making the baby. <laughs> Oh my, they get everyone involved here. They, they really do. And so back at the Decepticon base, a sound wave, laser beak, and reflector have reported in. Megatron wants this damn damn so they can destroy the Autobots <laughs> once and for all. Oh my god, just maybe stick some stupid propellers outside your ship and let the currents do this? Or set up uh, solar power? You can probably float something nice on the water and you wouldn't have to deal with any of this and the Autobots would have no idea where the hell you are, Decepticons. Please! <laughs> this has been Spec's TED Talk. <laughs> it's just you'd think they'd have, they'd come up with a better way of dealing with us unless they absolutely just, they they don't do have this. the parts or something, but again, I, I feel they like, would. I feel like I mean, God, they made, like, a freaking giant underground city just out of their ship and whatever else was around there. I feel like they could probably manage this, except maybe the buoyancy bits. Even so, though, I agree with you on the current thing or something that could generate electric, at least generate electricity or something. I feel like they And since the they, they make Energon from, like, these dams and electricity anyway, that seems like it should be able to suit their needs. It would make sense. But apparently they're just like, no, we've got to make everything difficult, and also we like fighting. Apparently. Uh, so basically, Starscream's being a bitch about this plan, and Megatron's just like, Decepticons, prepare for conquest! And then they all ollie out, out of there. <laughs> yeah, and at the Ark, all the Autobots are lined up to meet the new dino children. Like, they are literally in lined line <laughs> against the wall, and they're, for whatever reason... They're not in the same room Teletran's in, but they aren't doing this outside. They're in the stupid dark. Yeah. So, uh, Ratchet and Wheeljack are super proud parents, damn it. So proud. They are. So proud. So proud that, uh, I believe, uh, Ratchet starts talking with Wheeljack's voice. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Maybe. And the Dinobots are huge. Like, the, they're, they're They're tall. really big they're compared big. to the other Autobots. They're big fellas. So it's Grimlock, Slag, and Sludge, the original Dinobots, because... Swoop and Snarl get added later. later. Yeah. So, uh, please note that more recently, Slag's name has been changed to Slug on account of the word Slag being a slur in Britain. We are going to continue to use his original name for now, as that is what he's referred to um, in the G1 cartoon. Yeah. And we're located in the U.S. where this word does not have the same meaning. However, please let us know if we need to make a bleak version available or something, because we certainly don't want to cause offense offense to anybody. It's just we are not in that culture, and it's going to be confusing for trying to swap back and forth when the cartoon is calling him something completely different. Yeah. So Huffer says something sarcastic. <laughs> so it's like, shut up, Huffer. You know, normal. Um, so I think Huffer says something to the effect of, what else can they do? It's like, 
Well, buddy, they can destroy the fuck out of shit. <laughs> they really can, as is demonstrated very shortly. <laughs> and Wheeljack says the Dinobots have simple brains. Just like real dinosaurs. Oh, this is n- This seems like a, a bad idea. <laughs> this is not a plan for success. So, naturally, uh, the Dinobots start attacking. <laughs> You'd really think they would have done a test run somewhere else besides the main room with Teletran. Like, maybe they could have gone outdoors. Or something. But no, we're, we're gonna do it here. This is definitely the better option. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Bumblebee tries to stop Grimlock from getting into the control room, to which Spike says, you'll need some help, and hops inside. What exactly is the help you're planning on rendering here, little buddy? <laughs> Unfortunately, it really looks like being a smear on the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Grimlock blows up Teletran 1. <laughs> How did Teletran 1 even attract Grimlock's attention? It's not shiny, it's not moving, it's not making noise. <laughs> Apparently it's just got Grimlock attractant or something. <laughs> it's a giant target. I'm playing it on it. Pretty much. <clears throat> so the Dinobots are nigh indestructible, apparently, as the Autobots are having some pretty severe difficulty doing much to them. Well, they basically did make them to be indestructible. I mean, yes, yeah, so they're doing their job. <laughs> they, they did their damnedest. And then Prime shouts at the at them, um, the Dinobots must be destroyed. Well, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> They're your babies. They, you have no one to blame but yourselves. You made them dumb on purpose. Unless the issue is that you just didn't have the parts to make their brains more sophisticated. I get, regardless, I, I feel like this is not their fault. And uh, clearly Wheeljack agrees with me. Uh-huh. Because uh, Wheeljack basically knocks out his babies and begs Optimus to not kill them. But uh, Optimus is a dick, and the Dinobots are buried back in the cave from whence the Dino Bones came from. <laughs> God, Optimus, we don't stick babies in the closet. And Wheeljack is sad. <laughs> Very sad. And meanwhile, the Decepticons are attacking the Hydro Power Plant. We see Soundwave, Megatron, Thundercracker in robot mode. Which... <laughs> Jet mode. <laughs> and they very. Svelte so Braun flying in, or just someone who's colored like Braun. We never see them again. <laughs> and then we see Skywarp and Starscream? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Teletran 1 appears to be the robot 911 center as the humans in the hydropower plant attempt to contact the Autobots to say, hey, we're being attacked by fucking Decepticons. It does not work. It does not go through on account of Teletran 1 still being fucking broken. (laughs) As Ratchet is attempting repairs. Meanwhile, Ravage continues to show his complete hatred of windows. Security windows, even. He goes right through. Um, A sound wave sends him in to stop the humans from contacting the Autobots. And everyone gets eye beams today. You get eye beams. You get eye beams. Everyone gets eye beams. Let's see. We've got two Dinobots and Ravage with eye beams in this episode. Why? <laughs> it's the hot new thing, and all the kids have to <laughs> And Megatron claims the right of conquest over the hydro power plant. I don't know why I find that funny, but I do. <laughs> it's just. It seems like it's really. <laughs> I claim the right of conquest over this human installation. It seems like it feels like he's claiming right of conquest over the grocery store. Yes! Yes! <laughs> okay, so uh, with Teletran 1 out of commission, apparently Hound is the Decepticon monitor today. Oh, sans cliff jumper t- today, thankfully. But he is human setting Spike. I don't like they. Hound contacts Optimus to warn him that Decepticons are out causing shenanigans. Like, part of his headlights up? It's I think it might have blinked a bit. It was weird. <laughs> yeah. And Prime says he'll meet Hound at the Great Falls in 8,000 astroseconds. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate all of you. <laughs> just want you to know that. Um, oh, can we please have some consistency with our time units? Means. I'm like, look. Either don't use human time measurements or do. I don't particularly care. But I do feel like maybe you guys should pick one. Consider you're not assholes and you work with Spike and uh, Sparkplug all the fucking time. I'm actually going to bank on you probably swap over to human measurements of time. At least when talking to humans anyway. It would make the most sense. But... Anyway, Prime has a very abstract-esque Autobot symbol in the shot. It looks super, super ass grumpy. <laughs> also, apparently part of his helmet sort of pops out as a communicator, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> and Bumblebee is on guard duty due to earlier injuries while fighting Grimlock. Meanwhile, the Decepticons are calmly gathering a fuck ton of energon. 
And uh, Ironhide is cosplaying as Ratchet again. Deep down, he totally wants to be a medic. I mean, he just wants to add more to his Swiss Army knife oh, set of skills. Like, no, dude, let Ratchet keep this. So uh, Prime doesn't sense any Decepticon activity. But it's okay, because it's official. Blue Streak has Shaggy's laugh. And I love it. In all seriousness, it's really funny to me that we've got Fred, Shaggy, and the original Scooby-Doo's voice actors here, which are Megatron, Blue Streak, and Ratchet, respectively, if anybody was unaware. Watching Frank Welker swap between Megatron and Fred Jones' voice is freaking fantastic, by the way. I think I'm going to have to find that. I, I, I know there's a clip, and if we can find it, I will. <laughs> we will link to it. Um, but yeah, no, it is, it's pretty delightful. <laughs> I'd really like to see that, yeah. Or hear it. So uh, Decepticons come out of their super lame hiding spots to attack. Apparently a bunch of the Autobots moved off screen within the last three seconds. Because suddenly there's way fewer of them. Uh, no one can hit shit in this fight. But I mean, when can they ever, apparently? This is true. Uh, Megatron takes the high ground with a big-ass cable powering his fusion cannon as he has Rumble cause an earthquake under the Autobots. He also laughs, but there is no sound. Not yeah. At all. He shoots the ledge out from under the Autobots, and they proceed to fall into the water. They were in, they were all in super goofy poses on all, all the way down. <laughs> it's like someone's upside down, someone is sort of flailing, someone <laughs> looks like they're maybe I don't remember if someone looked like they were swamp diving. Maybe I don't, I don't know. think so, but they all look really silly. They did look very silly, and none of them can swim right now as they're dragged downriver. How strong is that current? I mean, they're all heavy-ass robots. You wouldn't <laughs> think a current would be able to move however many fucking tons of metal that is. But or that they'd be able to stand in the river. Well, I guess it's a really deep river or Apparently. something. Apparently. We still don't know, like, the official, like, heights. I think people tend to, at least, I tend to default. So, like, somewhere like 27? 27, 27 for... between 40, depending on who we're talking about. Yeah. So, like, obviously, the Dinobots and Megatron are higher. a lot taller. But, like, the minibots are maybe around 10. Yeah. 10, 12. Like, them I could see maybe being underwater. But, but Optimus? <laughs> well, the thing is, it does depend on how deep it is. Because if it's, like, a 100-foot reservoir or something. That's true. But, but this was a river, and those usually aren't quite that deep. Yeah. Thankfully, Bumblebee followed them and picks up Spike, who apparently went with the Autobots. Yeah, he went with the Autobots, but Bumblebee <sighs> was supposed to have stayed behind. Uh... Megatron wants the dead bodies of his enemies brought to him right this very moment. Thank you very much. God, he really loves his trophies. He does. <laughs> and Bumblebee returns to base with Spike to warn Wheeljack and Ratchet. Wheeljack unveils a brain upgrade that he's been working on for the Dinobots. Seriously, Wheeljack, you couldn't have done that earlier. You couldn't have done that before they woke up and trashed everything. Maybe your babies wouldn't be in the closet right now. <laughs> the Dinobots deserve better. They do. Wheeljack and Ratchet reactivate the Dinobots against the orders of Optimus Prime, in which we get Grimlock, Grimsy, my dumb dino baby. You can talk now! And meanwhile, Megatron's got the other Autobots, well, basically on the ropes. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're all chained up. Megs, honey, I'm gonna kink shame you for a second here. <laughs> I mean, honestly, they're not even chained securely. It's just, like, sort of draped artistically on them. Yeah, still kink shaming Megatron here, though. <laughs> And then it's totally death by freaking firing squad. Like, Which seems a little dark for this card, too. <laughs> well, I mean, they were all red. Like, the last episode that we did, Starscream basically had them chained up against the wall and was like, I'm going to shoot you all. I'm starting to see a pattern here. <laughs> Clearly, they're into bondage. <laughs> <laughs> yep, still kink shaming. <laughs> God. But no, yeah, they totally do death by firing squad multiple times. Yeah, but it no, seems dark. Yeah, no one's getting any last requests here. So, uh, Wheeljack and the Dinobots arrive by flying. They were, the Dinobots are like the few Autobots that can actually fly. It's there like, if, if they can fly, why can't you make yourself fly, Wheeljack? <laughs> but he is flying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the rest of the time he can't. <laughs> it's dumb. And the Dinobots are still pretty dumb. But... They're, They're better. Fun. They're better than they were. Yes, they can talk now. They're they're good kids. And Starscream continues to be incredibly petty. <laughs> You're supposed to know everything. What are those? Scrap metal. <laughs> this <laughs> Megatron gives not a single solitary shit. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sludge can swim fine in dino mode, apparently. <laughs> he is the um, Brontosaurus, maybe? 
I think he's the Brontosaurus. Pretty sure he's the Brontosaurus. But yeah, that's sort of a... It's not aquatic, but apparently it's... Aquatic enough? He's heavy enough that he can handle himself in the water, I guess. Anyway, Wheeljack just beams Megatron in the chest with a shot from his gun. (laughs) And Megatron just fucking falls down. (laughs) And guess what Starscream does? Megatron has fallen! I Starscream and now your leader! Decepticons, follow me! (laughs) And the Decepticons try to attack the Dinobots. Uh... Failing utterly miserably. My favorite part is when Grim catches Skywarp in his dino mode's mouth and then just tosses him at Soundwave. <laughs> so, meanwhile, Megatron ults into his gun and magnetizes to the bottom of Starscream's jet mode and just starts shooting. <laughs> Apparently that's, that's what he wants to do right now. All right. All right. <laughs> and Wheeljack gets himself some more guns. Obviously, more guns solves everything. Yeah, I, I think I think he like got everybody else's guns that For, were tied up or something. They were all the, the Decepticons just dumped them in a pile, <laughs> and then he works his voodoo tech magic to somehow get all of the Autobots out of their restraints. Because like apparently, one of the guns has some sort of microwave feature, <laughs> and then another like blue streaks like charges people up somehow. All I, I know, know is it somehow got all the bots out of the restraints, dried off, and recharged in two shots. Yes. It was weird. So Megatron orders a retreat. <laughs> the Decepticons are blasting off again! All on Team Rockets. <laughs> yeah. And Optimus deigns to allow the Dinobots to stay. And yet they still live in a closet. We're really not forgiving you, Optimus, even if you are dad-shaped. <laughs> And that's where today's episode cuts. Uh, join us next time for Fire on the Mountain, where the Autobots remember that Skyfire exists and our favorite alien robots take a trip down to South America. I also remain convinced that Megatron's got a thing for big, shiny-ass crystals. He does. I mean, considering there's at least three freaking episodes with shiny-ass crystals, and I'm pretty sure that the uh, Transcontinental, Trans-Europe Express one also involves a big, shiny crystal. <laughs> that would not shock me. But specifically, it's Wheeljack who remembers Skyfire. I'm convinced Wheeljack just didn't know, and then they mentioned it in passing. He was like, oh, I can get him out of there. (laughs) Anyway, Specs, what are our fanfics for today? All right, we um, we have four selections today. The first is The Field by Retrolex. It's actually kind of an older piece of fanfiction that they rewrote and reposted. It's a G1 cartoon continuity rated T for teens. Uh, it's Jen. There's no pairings, and the main characters here are Ratchet and Cliff Jumper. <laughs> Ratchet's not going to have a fun time. <laughs> what does that he ever have a fun time? I don't think ever. Yeah. Yeah. So in summary, Ratchet's job is never easy. Sometimes the other Autobots don't make it any easier for him. And I just wanted something with Ratchet here. That seems fair. Yeah. And it's a one-shot. The rewritten version, I think, is slightly, is somewhat shorter than the original. I will probably add the link to the original version. Our next choice is Just a Little Tipsy by Alien Pixels. G1 cartoon rated K. Gen, no pairings. Characters here are Ratchet, Wheeljack, Optimus Prime, and Prowl. And in summary, it's, how the hell did Wheeljack come up with the idea for the Dinobots anyway? <laughs> and I just wanted something with ID- I Dinobot ideation, because the Dinobots are a really big part of this episode. They're the entire focus. <laughs> and I wanted to focus on them, and it's a, it's a one-shot. And our next choice is uh, Vigil by Nightwind. Uh, the G1 cartoon continuity, rated K... It's Jen and no pairings. Characters include the Dinobots and Optimus Prime. Uh, in summary, one of the Dinobots falls deathly ill. Then the universe collapses. And no, no, I'm kidding. Actually, only Optimus Prime collapses and only into a gushy puddle of guilt. <laughs> Vigil is the first in a series, and Nightwind originally wrote this, like, back in 1990 and first posted it around 2000, then reposted it, I think, in 2010? Maybe? This is pretty old, but this is sort of the start of the swoop as a medic headcanons, which is apparently pretty popular still. I like it. It's really cute in a lot of the fanfic that I've seen it in. Yeah. And so our last choice today is Dinos and Fireworks by M. Mouse 15, a G1 cartoon rated K. 
It's Jen, and there aren't any pairings. Uh, the characters are Wheeljack, the Dinobots, Ratchet, and Sideswipe. In summary, the Dinobots are young and have never seen fireworks. <laughs> and again, it's Dinobot-centric, and it's a one-shot. And it's really cute. Cause... It sounds really cute. I haven't read this one yet, but I'm gonna have to. It is. It's basically the Ratchet and Wheeljack have difficulties getting the Dinobots to go to, into recharge, like, most of the time. And then Sideswipe is like... Hey! I have mini explosions! <laughs> Pretty much! And then the dino, like, after the explosion... God. The firework display, the dinobots are like, Oh, let's go to bed now. More or less. <laughs> and it's just, it's cute. It's very cute. And the field is very funny, it's a comedy, but the rest of these are just, they're good. And that just about wraps it up for us today. Remember to check out our Tumblr at afterspark-podcast.tumblr.com for any additional information, show notes, or links we may have mentioned. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at AfterSparkPod, all one word, and SoundCloud and YouTube at AfterSparkPodcast, with a space between AfterSpark and Podcast. (laughs) You can also find us on Pillowfort as AfterSpark-Podcast, and on AO3 by searching for AfterSparkPodcast. Till next time, I'm Specs. And I'm Els. Toodles.